The mighty Euphrates River used to near Haled al Hamis's farm, but now the river is only visible from a distance. The crops have been destroyed due to the lack of irrigation. Even worse, the farmer's family has been left without drinking water. 300 year old paths and hedges laid bare by record setting heat. Most were revealed by falling water levels as rivers shrivel. Welcome to the channel. Today we're diving into a critical issue that Joe Rogan recently highlighted on his popular podcast and during his insightful UFC commentary, the drying up of the Euphrates River and its global implications. Known for his fearless interviews and rational perspectives, Rogan has sparked widespread concern and curiosity about this vital waterway, leading to a surge in Google searches. But why is the Euphrates so crucial? And why should we all be worried about its potential disappearance? We are Jesus' eternal aura. In today's video, you will have appropriate answers to all the questions above. Before you know what happened, subscribe to the channel, like this video, and click the bell icon for all the latest updates. On his channel. There's been some things that they've found since then that have really sort of made Graham Hancock's theories. Joe Rogan has recently brought attention to a significant and alarming event, the drying up of the Euphrates River. This phenomenon has sparked curiosity and concern as layers of silt and mud peel back, revealing remnants of ancient societies. The exposed riverbed acts like a time capsule, ready to unveil its secrets to those who seek them. As we delve into this enigmatic event, we are prompted to ponder what we might discover. Lost cities, forgotten artifacts, and answers to long-standing historical mysteries. Additionally, the environmental and social impacts of the river's desiccation are profound and far-reaching. To fully understand the implications of this event, it is essential to examine the causes behind the Euphrates River's decline. A combination of factors has contributed to this phenomenon, with climate change playing a significant role. Relentless heat waves have exacerbated the situation, causing increased evaporation and reduced water flow. Extensive water extraction for agricultural purposes has further strained the river. Moreover, numerous dams built along its course have disrupted the natural balance, significantly reducing the river's flow. The drying of the Euphrates has had devastating consequences for the aquatic life that once thrived in its waters. Fish and other aquatic organisms have experienced a catastrophic decline, leading to a silent void in the river's ecosystem. Birds that once flocked to the river's bounty have been forced to seek refuge elsewhere, disrupting migratory patterns and local biodiversity. The disappearance of these species is a stark reminder of the interconnectedness of ecosystems and the delicate balance that sustains them. For the communities that have depended on the Euphrates for generations, this is a crisis of epic proportions. Farmers now gaze upon cracked soil that was once fertile and productive, now barren and unforgiving. The water scarcity has not only withered crops, but has also sown seeds of uncertainty and despair among the locals. The livelihoods of these communities deeply intertwined with the river's health are at severe risk. However, the drying riverbed has also unveiled structures and relics from the past, sparking curiosity and wonder. These discoveries whisper tales of ancient times, raising questions about what else lies hidden beneath and what stories they hold. The revelation of these historical artifacts offers a glimpse into the rich history and culture that once flourished along the Euphrates. Joe Rogan's concerns extend beyond the environmental and social impacts. His insights are deeply connected to biblical narratives, particularly the prophecies found in the Book of Revelation. The mention of the Euphrates River drying up in Revelation 16.12 holds great significance, as it is seen as a crucial event linked to the end times, 
or eschaton. The Book of Revelation, the concluding book of the New Testament, offers a series of apocalyptic visions and prophecies rich in symbolism and open to varied interpretations. Chapter 16 of Revelation outlines a sequence of seven bowls containing God's wrath, which will be unleashed upon the earth during the final judgments, or plagues. The sixth bowl is notably significant, describing the Euphrates River drying up as a precursor to a scenario where kings from the east will cross the dried up river, moving towards the site of the ultimate battle, Armageddon. Among the fascinating discoveries recently emerged from the drying Euphrates is an ancient, enigmatic cave steeped in legends and prophecies dating back millennia. According to ancient biblical texts, this mysterious cavern is believed to imprison four angels held captive until their eventual release to unleash chaos upon the world. The idea of these supernatural beings bound beneath the river's waters has captivated believers and sparked lively debates for generations. Joe Rogan, a prominent figure in the entertainment world and host of the acclaimed podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience, is among those intrigued by this mystery. Known for his insatiable curiosity and willingness to explore a broad range of topics, Rogan has delved into science, history, and the paranormal. Naturally, the mystery of the cave beneath the Euphrates River would capture his attention, prompting an investigative journey filled with conversations. Rogan, a thoughtful skeptic, would approach this subject with his characteristic mix of open-mindedness and critical thinking. On his podcast, he often engages in deep discussions with experts from various fields, providing his listeners with insights into complex issues. The legend of the angels trapped beneath the Euphrates would undoubtedly lead Rogan to invite religious scholars, historians, and mythologists to explore the origins and interpretations of this ancient tale. While respecting the beliefs of those who hold the legend dear, Rogan's curiosity would drive him to question the credibility of these narratives. He might consider alternative explanations, pondering symbolic representations in ancient texts or the influence of cultural factors in shaping these stories over time. As a proponent of evidence-based inquiry, Rogan might seek out experts in acoustics, geology, and related fields to examine the mysterious sounds reportedly emanating from the cave. His quest for understanding would involve determining whether these auditory phenomena have a natural scientific explanation, or if they could indeed be linked to otherworldly forces. The ceiling of the cave has long intrigued historians, archaeologists, and enthusiasts. The origins of its closure are enshrouded in myths and ancient tales handed down through generations. Some speculate that powerful sorcery sealed the cave to protect a hidden treasure or a potent ancient artifact. Others suggest that an advanced civilization sealed it to safeguard knowledge or technology far ahead of its time. Legend has it that the cave's existence was first recorded in ancient texts and scrolls from centuries ago, discovered by intrepid adventurers and scholars who stumbled upon cryptic references in forgotten tombs or ancient libraries. These texts spoke of a hidden portal leading to a subterranean world of unimaginable wonders. However, the Euphrates River, where the cave is purportedly concealed, presents its own challenges. The river's constantly shifting nature and strong currents make exploration difficult and hazardous despite identifying many potential entry points along the riverbanks. Joe Rogan's revelation about the drying of the Euphrates River has brought to light not only environmental and social concerns, but also deep-seated historical and biblical mysteries. As we explore the profound effects of this event, we are reminded of the delicate balance of ecosystems, the resilience of human communities, and the enduring allure of ancient legends. 
The drying Euphrates stands as a testament to the interconnectedness of natural and cultural worlds, inviting us to uncover and reflect upon the stories it holds. Accessing the mysteries of the Euphrates remains elusive. A bizarre prophecy from the Euphrates is captivating many Muslims worldwide, who are closely monitoring the river's drying. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, warned that the drying of the Euphrates would reveal a massive treasure, sparking a devastating war as people vie for its possession. Speculations about the nature of this treasure vary, with some suggesting it might be gold, while others propose it could be crude oil. As the Euphrates continues to experience alarming levels of drying, the question arises, have these prophecies come to pass? Similarly, the Bible also prophesies that in the last days, the Euphrates River will dry up to pave the way for the passage of the kings of the East. This is not limited to Christians. Muslims also closely monitor the drying of the Euphrates River, believing in what Prophet Muhammad stated about the existence of golden mountains in hadiths concerning the Euphrates River. However, the exact location and existence of these golden mountains remain subjects of debate and speculation among scholars and scientists. While some interpret them as metaphorical, others believe in their literal existence. The Hadiths assert that the day of resurrection will not occur until the Euphrates River dries up, revealing a mountain of gold that will lead to conflict and strife among people. This prophecy, though unclear in its specifics, is considered inevitable and will occur in God's appointed time. The drying of the Euphrates River is anticipated to precede significant events in Islamic eschatology, such as the appearance of Al-Mahdi. The ongoing decline in water levels in the Euphrates and Tigris rivers is attributed to large-scale dam projects and environmental strain. These contemporary challenges, juxtaposed with age-old predictions, prompt reflection on the intersections of faith, ecology, and global events. Recently, the water levels of the Euphrates River have reduced significantly. Turkey continues to limit the flow of the river's water into Syrian territories for over 30 months. This drop in water levels has prompted international and local appeals to Turkey to release Syria's agreed-upon share. Nevertheless, Turkey, the upstream country, ignores these appeals. The residents of northeastern Syria depend primarily on the Euphrates River and consider it the lifeline of the region. However, the decline in its water levels has widely impacted the population in terms of electricity, irrigation and drinking water, and has even posed threats to food security and livestock. The river's declining flow and low water levels have led to an increase in water toxicity creating a fertile environment for the spread of diseases and epidemics. Drinking water, an indisputable sacred rite, is now under threat. The water source of the Euphrates River has become a fertile environment for epidemics and pandemics to spread due to poor water quality. The reduced flow of the Euphrates contributes to increased concentrations of toxins from wastewater discharge from industrial facilities in Turkey's wastewater channels that flow into the river. Falling river levels have led to the closure of drinking water stations and difficulties in obtaining good quality water suitable for drinking. The Euphrates River is now swamp-like, leading to the spread of disease due to high levels of pollution in its waters. Direct use of water sources is currently threatening people's lives. The historical significance of the Euphrates River is profound. The Euphrates has once again demonstrated its profound influence on our stories, beliefs, and discussions. Whether considered through religious, historical, or environmental perspectives, the power of this event to ignite curiosity 
wonder and debate is undeniable. As the riverbed continues to unveil its secrets, the world watches in anticipation, pondering the implications for our present and future. According to Joe Rogan, delving deeper into the revelations brought about by the Euphrates drying up leaves us with more questions than answers. The riverbed, once vibrant with life and flowing water, now exposes remnants of the past that demand further exploration. Among the most captivating discoveries is an ancient settlement. The intricate patterns on pottery shards, the layout of stone structures, and the forgotten tools left behind all weave a narrative, a story we are only beginning to decipher. Who were the inhabitants of this ancient place? What stories did they share? And what aspirations did they hold? Archaeologists and historians are tirelessly piecing together the fragments of this bygone era to uncover the answers. Another mystery lies in the sudden disappearance of the river itself. While climate change and human activities have significantly contributed, there is a sense that not all elements of this puzzle are understood. Are there natural phenomena yet to be discovered that played a role in this dramatic transformation? Scientists are on a mission, utilizing advanced technologies and conducting thorough studies to uncover the hidden factors behind the river's demise. As we contemplate these mysteries, there is a sense of hope and excitement about the future. The dried up riverbed has become a treasure trove for researchers, providing a unique opportunity to study Earth's past and uncover insights that were once submerged. The discoveries made here could transform our understanding of history, geography, and the environment. This revelation calls for immediate action to address the challenges facing the region, urging us to work collaboratively towards a sustainable future. Even in its absence, the Euphrates River remains a source of mystery, creativity, and wisdom. In these times of transition and discovery, the dried up riverbed serves as a reminder of the ever-changing nature of our world and the continuous quest for knowledge and understanding. The scriptures, both Old and New Testaments, resound with prophetic visions of a future epoch that will redefine existence for humanity. Central to this prophetic tapestry is the concept of the First Resurrection, a divine event marking the transformation of believers into immortal, spiritual beings set to reign with Christ for a thousand years. This profound moment is foretold in various passages each offering a glimpse into the culmination of God's plan for redemption and restoration. The Apostle Paul, in his letters to the early Christian communities, provides theological insights into the first resurrection. He speaks of a time when those who have died in Christ will rise first, transformed into spiritual bodies, followed by living believers who will undergo a similar metamorphosis to join them in meeting Christ in the air. 1 Thessalonians 4:15-17, 1 Corinthians 15:50-52. This event, Paul emphasizes, marks the ultimate victory over death and the beginning of a new spiritual existence for God's people. Revelation, the final book of the New Testament, amplifies this vision with its depiction of the saints reigning with Christ for a thousand years after the first resurrection. Revelation 20:6. Described as blessed and holy, these resurrected believers are appointed as priests of God and Christ, participating in the governance of a world where righteousness and peace prevail under the direct rule of the Messiah. The clarity and coherence of these prophetic narratives find resonance in the visions granted to the Old Testament prophet Daniel. Daniel, known for his interpretation of dreams and visions, under Babylonian captivity, received revelations that spanned centuries into the future, unveiling the rise and fall of empires and the ultimate triumph of God's kingdom. His prophecies, encapsulated in the latter chapters of his book, 
speak directly to the events leading up to and following the first resurrection. Daniel's prophecy in chapter 12 outlines a period of unprecedented tribulation and turmoil, spanning three and a half years, during which God's people will face intense persecution and adversity. Daniel 12.7 This time, characterized by its severity and duration, is prophesied to culminate in the vindication of the righteous and the defeat of evil forces that oppose God's sovereignty. Central to understanding the unfolding of these eschatological events is the concept of the abomination of desolation, referenced both by Daniel and Jesus Christ. This pivotal sign, involving sacrilege and desecration within sacred spaces, serves as a precursor to the tumultuous events preceding Christ's return. Matthew 24, 15. Jesus, in his teachings on the end times, urged his followers to discern and understand this sign, emphasizing its significance in signaling the imminent fulfillment of prophetic events. Matthew 24, 15, 16, Luke 21, 20. Daniel's prophecies, initially sealed until the time of the end, Daniel 12, 4, now unfold with remarkable clarity amidst the backdrop of modern advancements in knowledge and technology. The prophet foresaw a time when travel and the dissemination of knowledge would increase exponentially, a hallmark of the current age, where global connectivity and rapid information exchange shape societal dynamics and cultural interactions. The prophetic time frame outlined by Daniel, including the periods of 1,290 days and 1,335 days, Daniel 12, 11, 12, remains a subject of scholarly inquiry and theological debate. These intervals, marking significant stages in the unfolding drama of God's redemptive plan, are intricately tied to the events surrounding the abomination of desolation and the subsequent tribulation. Amidst the uncertainty of specific timelines, the scriptures resound with a call to faithfulness and endurance among believers. Daniel, in his final prophecies, assures God's people of their ultimate deliverance and reward for remaining steadfast in their devotion and obedience. Daniel 12, 12. This promise echoes Jesus Christ's admonition that those who endure to the end will be saved, underscoring the importance of perseverance in the face of adversity and persecution. Matthew 24, 13. As the world witnesses the unfolding of prophetic events and the intensification of global tensions, believers are reminded of their role as stewards of hope and agents of God's kingdom on earth. The prophecies of Daniel and the teachings of Jesus Christ converge to offer a roadmap of divine providence, a narrative that spans the epochs and culminates in the establishment of God's eternal reign. In conclusion, the scriptures paint a vivid portrait of the future, revealing the intricate interplay between divine sovereignty and human history. The first resurrection stands as a beacon of hope for believers, heralding a time when mortality will be swallowed up in immortality and God's kingdom will be fully realized on earth. As believers await the fulfillment of these promises, they are called to vigilance, faithfulness, and unwavering trust in the divine plan that unfolds amidst the complexities of the world stage. The prophecy of Daniel speaks profoundly about the end times and the ultimate deliverance of God's people. It foretells a future where all nations and peoples, not just the Jews, will find redemption through the return of Jesus Christ. This promise is encapsulated in Daniel 12, part 1, which assures that, at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. In broader theological terms, the return of Jesus Christ signifies not only the culmination of history, but also the establishment of God's eternal kingdom. This kingdom, as Daniel prophesied to King Nebuchadnezzar, will surpass and outlast all earthly kingdoms, symbolizing a reign of righteousness and peace. Daniel 2, 44. 
Central to understanding the end times, particularly from a Christian perspective, is the interplay between prophecy and fulfillment, as outlined in both Daniel and Revelation. While Revelation is often the focal point for eschatological study, in the New Testament, Daniel provides a crucial Old Testament counterpart. Placed among the prophets in Christian Bibles, Daniel's unique position in the Hebrew canon within the writings underscores its comprehensive perspective on divine revelation concerning human governments and the divine kingdom yet to come. Daniel, akin to other biblical prophets, prayed fervently for his people and diligently studied the scriptures of his time. His book, written in a mix of Aramaic and Hebrew, reflects his profound understanding of the international and native languages of his era, mirroring his role as a wise and capable figure within Babylonian court circles. Daniel 1 4, 2.7. The prophecies of Daniel are not confined to his immediate context, but stretch forward to the eschatological climax where his visions anticipate the trials and tribulations preceding the establishment of God's kingdom on earth. His vision of a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, Daniel 12, 1, points to a period of unprecedented upheaval and divine intervention, culminating in the vindication and deliverance of God's faithful. A notable prophecy within Daniel 12 concerns the protection of God's people during these tumultuous times. Revelation 3.10 echoes this sentiment, promising that those who persevere will be spared from the hour of trial that will test the world's inhabitants. This assurance of divine protection amidst global upheaval underscores the theme of God's providential care for His people extending beyond national and cultural boundaries to encompass all who are faithful to Him. In practical terms, the prophetic guidance provided in Luke 21 20, 21 advises believers to heed the signs of impending disaster and to act accordingly. As exemplified by the historical fulfillment of Jerusalem's siege in 70 AD, just as believers fled Jerusalem upon its encirclement by Roman armies, so too are future believers encouraged to discern the signs of the times and take appropriate action to safeguard themselves spiritually and physically. The Book of Revelation, while distinctive in its apocalyptic imagery and narrative structure, complements Daniel's prophetic framework by providing additional insight into the final consummation of God's purposes for humanity. Together, these books weave a tapestry of divine revelation that spans centuries, offering hope and clarity amidst the uncertainties of the present age. In conclusion, the prophecy of Daniel and its correlation with Revelation illuminates not only the future trajectory of human history, but also the enduring faithfulness of God towards His people. As believers anticipate the fulfillment of these prophecies, they are reminded of their dual citizenship in earthly kingdoms and in the eternal kingdom of God. This anticipation calls for vigilance, prayerful discernment, and a steadfast commitment to living out the gospel amidst the challenges of the present age. The Bible provides numerous prophecies that foretell significant events including the coming of Jesus Christ. For instance, Deuteronomy 18, 15, 18, Psalms 45, and Psalms 110 predict the arrival of Jesus on earth as a human. The prophetic literature in the Bible often shares common characteristics, particularly the apocalyptic style found in both the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation. These books are written in a highly symbolic language and reflect a belief in the imminent end of the world. Apocalyptic writing became particularly prominent in the period between the Old and New Testaments. While many apocalyptic texts from that era are not considered divinely inspired, the inclusion of Daniel and Revelation in the Bible 
confirms their authenticity and divine inspiration. Critics sometimes argue that the Book of Daniel was written after the events it describes, but the Bible often demonstrates God's ability to reveal future events through his prophets. Amos 3, 7 states, Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. Daniel himself attributes his prophecies to God, as seen in several passages, Daniel 2, 19, 2, 21 to 23, 2, 28, 5, 2, 14, 7, 2, 15, 2, 16, 8, 1, 6, 9, 21 to 22, and 10, 1, 2, 14. This attribution emphasizes that Daniel did not produce these visions from his own imagination. They were revelations from God. In Isaiah 46, 9 to 10, God declares, For I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Similarly, the book of Revelation is introduced as a direct prophecy from God. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants, things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John. Revelation 1.1 1, 1. The divine origin of these prophecies assures their truthfulness, as God, who cannot lie, Titus 1-2, inspired them. One notable aspect of the book of Daniel is its non-Israelite setting. While most of the Old Testament focuses on God's chosen nation, Israel, Daniel's context is the Babylonian Empire. The northern kingdom of Israel had been conquered by the Assyrians over a century earlier and now the southern kingdom of Judah had fallen to the Babylonians. The Babylonians likely considered themselves and their God superior to the Israelites and their God. However, through Daniel, God demonstrated his superiority. Even King Nebuchadnezzar acknowledged this, referring to Daniel's God as the God of gods, the Lord of kings, Daniel 2.47. This was a powerful testimony to the Jews in captivity, who had been exiled for their disobedience to God. The book of Daniel also shifts the focus from Israel's immediate history to a broader view of world-ruling empires. It contains visions given to both King Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel that outline a succession of four major empires, culminating in the establishment of God's kingdom. This prophetic overview is unparalleled in the Old Testament. According to the Expositor's Bible Commentary, Daniel is referenced more in New Testament prophecy than any other Old Testament book and contains more fulfilled prophecies than any other biblical book. The New Testament book of Revelation builds on Daniel's prophecies. It predicts the final resurgence of the fourth world ruling empire described by Daniel and expands on the coming kingdom of God, which will also be a world-ruling empire. Revelation details the events leading up to Christ's return and the establishment of God's kingdom on earth. It also provides more extensive information on God's judgment and the resurrection of the dead, a concept briefly mentioned in Daniel 12:2. Jesus himself authenticated the book of Daniel by referring to it in one of his most famous prophecies. In Matthew 24, 15, Jesus speaks about the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet. This reference underscores the significance of Daniel's prophecies in understanding end-time events. Despite its prophetic nature, the book of Daniel is historically part of the writings section of the Old Testament. Daniel was a young, intelligent Jew living in Jerusalem during the late 600s BC. During this period, the Babylonian Empire, also known as the Chaldean Empire, was rising to power under King Nebuchadnezzar. The Babylonian army invaded Judah between 607 and 605 BC, leading to the exile of many Jews, including Daniel. In summary, the book of Daniel is a crucial part of biblical prophecy providing extensive insights into world-ruling empires and God's ultimate plan for his kingdom. It complements the book of Revelation, which expands on Daniel's visions 
and provides a detailed account of the events leading to the establishment of God's eternal kingdom. Both books, written in an apocalyptic style, are divinely inspired and confirm the truth of God's prophecies. Daniel's non-Israelite setting and his detailed prophecies highlight God's sovereignty over all nations and his ability to reveal future events through his chosen prophets. The book of Daniel contains rich prophetic literature and is significant for understanding the foretelling of events in biblical history. Among the numerous prophecies, one of the most discussed is found in Daniel 9, which provides a detailed timeline. This chapter, along with others, helps to situate historical events and prophecies about the future. Daniel was among the many Jews, including children of prominent Jewish families, taken to Babylon as prisoners, along with his three friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, better known by their Babylonian names, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel was captured during the Babylonian conquest of Judah around 605 BC, Daniel 1.1. Daniel's natural abilities coupled with divine assistance quickly elevated him within the Babylonian government. The God of Israel, whom Daniel faithfully served, endowed him with the ability to interpret dreams and granted him several visions with their meanings. Shortly after Daniel began serving King Nebuchadnezzar, the king had a disturbing dream that none of his magicians, astrologers, or sorcerers could interpret. In their frustration and fear, they declared, There is no other who can tell it to the king except the gods, whose dwelling is not with flesh. Daniel 2.11 King Nebuchadnezzar, enraged by their inability, ordered the execution of all his wise men, including Daniel and his friends. When Daniel learned of the decree, he requested an audience with the king, promising to reveal the dream and its interpretation. His request was granted, and Daniel, with his friends, earnestly sought God's mercy and wisdom. God revealed the dream and its meaning to Daniel in a vision, Daniel 2.19. Appearing before King Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel declared, There is a God in heaven who reveals secrets and proceeded to recount and interpret the king's dream. Nebuchadnezzar had seen a magnificent statue with a head of gold, chest and arms of silver, belly and thighs of bronze, legs of iron, and feet partly of iron and partly of clay. A supernatural stone, cut out without hands, struck the statue's feet, shattering the entire structure, which was then blown away like chaff. The stone grew into a mountain that filled the whole earth. Daniel 2, 31-35 Daniel explained that the statue represented four successive world empires. The head of gold symbolized Nebuchadnezzar's Babylonian empire. Following Babylon, an inferior kingdom, the chest and arms of silver, would arise, then a third kingdom of bronze, and finally, a fourth kingdom, as strong as iron, which would crush all others. This last empire would eventually be divided, symbolized by the feet of iron and clay, and its ultimate destruction would coincide with the establishment of God's eternal kingdom, represented by the stone, Daniel 2, 36, 45. While the names of the kingdoms were not initially revealed, later visions provided more details. In Daniel 7, Another vision described four beasts, symbolizing four empires. The first beast resembled a lion, the second a bear, the third a leopard, and the fourth was a terrifying beast with iron teeth and ten horns. Daniel 7, 1 Talker 7. These visions further confirmed the succession of empires and the eventual establishment of God's kingdom. Jesus himself referred to these prophecies underscoring their significance. In Matthew 24, 15, he mentioned the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, linking Daniel's visions to end-time events. After interpreting the dream, Daniel was appointed chief administrator over all the wise men of Babylon. 
This position allowed him to influence the kingdom and bear witness to the power and sovereignty of the God of Israel. The prophecies in the book of Daniel not only reveal the rise and fall of empires, but also highlight God's control over history and his ultimate plan for an eternal kingdom. The prophetic insights provided in Daniel complement those in the New Testament, especially in the book of Revelation. Together, these books offer a comprehensive picture of God's plan for humanity, the rise and fall of earthly kingdoms, and the establishment of his everlasting kingdom. The book of Daniel is a cornerstone of biblical prophecy, providing detailed visions of future events and the coming of God's kingdom. Daniel's faithfulness, coupled with divine revelation, offers a powerful testimony to God's sovereignty and his plans for the world. The prophecies in Daniel, echoed and expanded upon in Revelation, assure believers of the ultimate victory of God's kingdom over all earthly powers. This prophecy from Daniel emphasizes the rise of four great earthly kingdoms. Nebuchadnezzar's dream in Daniel 2, echoed in Daniel 7, reveals these kingdoms. The second kingdom is identified as the kings of Media and Persia, while the third kingdom is Greece, Daniel 8, 20, 21. The fourth kingdom is described with ten horns representing ten kings, symbolizing ten revivals of the Roman Empire. Daniel 7:24. So far, nine revivals have occurred, with one more yet to come. Historical events confirm the accuracy of these prophecies. The Babylonian Empire, 625-539 BC, was followed by the Medo-Persian Empire, 538-330 BC, which fell to the Greco-Macedonian Empire under Alexander the Great. Alexander's empire was swiftly divided among his four generals. Daniel 8814. The Roman Empire, symbolized by iron, emerged in 31 BC, dominating until AD 476. It was known for its military prowess and brutality, absorbing previous kingdoms. The Roman Empire split into Western Rome and Eastern Constantinople divisions around AD 330, matching the two legs of Nebuchadnezzar's statue. The prophecies in Daniel predict a final revival of the Roman Empire, symbolized by the Ten Toes, representing ten kings who will receive power briefly before the kingdom of God is established. Revelation 17, 12. This union of ten kingdoms, likely emerging from the European Union, will ultimately crumble due to the weak bond between iron and clay. The accuracy of these prophecies, spanning centuries, demonstrates divine inspiration. Daniel's predictions, made around 600 BC, accurately foresaw the development of these kingdoms. God's promise to Israel, conditional on their obedience, was to elevate them above all nations. Deuteronomy 28-1, Genesis 26-4, 48-4. However, disobedience led to their captivity. Deuteronomy 28-15, 41. Israel fell to the Assyrians, and Judah to Nebuchadnezzar, fulfilling God's warnings. The prophecies revealed to Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel about the world's major kingdoms have unfolded precisely as predicted, also foretelling the coming kingdom of God. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon from 604-561 BC, is a significant biblical figure notorious for his conquests and for destroying the temple in Jerusalem. Despite his enmity towards the Jews, Nebuchadnezzar issued an edict recorded in Daniel 4, making him the only heathen monarch extensively quoted in the Bible. His decree holds significant importance, demonstrating God's influence even over pagan rulers. This historical footnote highlights the enduring impact of God's revelations through Daniel and the ultimate fulfillment of his divine plan. This passage in the book of Daniel, inspired by God and profitable for us to read, said Timothy 3.16,
holds an important message through the story of King Nebuchadnezzar's decree. Written in Aramaic, this decree is significant not only because of its content, but also due to its linguistic and cultural context. Most of the Old Testament was written in Hebrew and most of the New Testament in Greek, but small portions of both were written in Aramaic. The extensive use of Aramaic in the Bible is particularly found in the Book of Daniel, including Nebuchadnezzar's Edict in Chapter 4. This use of Aramaic is not surprising given that the setting of the book is during the Jews' captivity in Babylon. Aramaic, also called Chaldean, or the language of the Chaldeans, was the language of ancient Babylon, and Daniel and his fellow captives were taught it as part of their training to serve the king. Daniel 1 4 2 4. Consequently, all Jews began learning and using this language, and it eventually displaced Hebrew as the spoken language of the Jews in Palestine. Including both Hebrew and Aramaic in the book of Daniel reflected the Jews' bilingual nature. Since Babylon was the major empire at that time, its language, Aramaic, was the language of international protocol. Therefore, in addressing his decree to all peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, it made sense for Nebuchadnezzar to issue his decree in Aramaic, Daniel 4 per 1. Most heathen kings delighted in erecting large monuments to tout their power and military successes, and King Nebuchadnezzar was no exception. He had many such monuments, but his decree in Daniel 4 deviated from the usual pattern for kings. Instead of boasting about his accomplishments, his decree included not only an account of a dream affirming his kingdom's prestige, but also the story of his personal humiliation. Most people, especially kings, do not like to speak of their shortcomings, yet for some reason, Nebuchadnezzar admitted to everyone a grave personal fault and the punishment he received because of it. Nebuchadnezzar went insane, with his dementia so severe that he completely lost his mind and lived like an animal for seven times, apparently seven years. Daniel 4, 32, 33. What brought on this punishment was pride. God forewarned Nebuchadnezzar of his impending demise through the dream he gave him. Daniel, who interpreted the dream for the king, advised him to break off his sins by being righteous and his iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, perhaps lengthening his prosperity. Daniel 4.27 However, Nebuchadnezzar could not contain himself. A year later, while walking about his royal palace, he boasted about the great Babylon he had built by his mighty power and for the honor of his majesty. Daniel 4.30 God's response was swift. While the word was still in the king's mouth, a voice fell from heaven, announcing that the kingdom had departed from him. Daniel 4.31 Consequently, the king suffered a great humiliation, enduring a horrific mental illness for seven years. Nebuchadnezzar began his decree by stating it was directed to all peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth. Daniel 4.1 after the customary wish for peace, he stated his purpose, to declare the signs and wonders that the Most High God had worked for him, acknowledging God's mighty wonders and eternal dominion. Daniel 4, 2, 3. Instead of beginning his message with his own greatness, he focused on God and how God had worked with him. Nebuchadnezzar recounted how he had received a dream, interpreted by Daniel, warning him of his impending insanity so he would learn that the most high rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses daniel 4:25 he needed to know that heaven rules daniel 4:26 the king then stated that his predicted insanity did indeed occur daniel 4:4 4, 4. after this humbling experience and after his mental abilities had returned nebuchadnezzar wrote I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever, for his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. 
All the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He does according to his will. No one can restrain his hand or say to him, What have you done? And those who walk in pride he is able to put down. Daniel 4, 34, 37. As fascinating as it is to link the sounds from the river to the afterlife, such connections are based more on personal beliefs than on evidence. Here the Euphrates not only traverses the physical land, but also the subjective realms of human perception, where what is known and unknown are as mixed as the river's flowing waters. Moreover, this preference for spiritual explanations over scientific reasoning showcases the continuous tug of war between the need for empirical understanding and the comfort found in spiritual beliefs. This ongoing interplay casts a long shadow over how natural phenomena are perceived and interpreted. As much as technology advances, the allure of linking natural events to supernatural causes persists, fueled by the human propensity for wonder and the allure of the unknown. Listening to sounds under the water is more than just an interesting activity. It's an essential part of studying marine life. Scientists use devices called hydrophones to keep tabs on the conversations of sea creatures like whales and dolphins. This isn't just for fun. It helps scientists understand how these animals interact and how their environment might be changing. Then there are geophones, which listen to a different kind of sound, the movements of the earth itself. These devices are incredibly sensitive and can pick up the slightest vibrations from underground. By placing them in specific spots, Scientists can gather important information about what's happening below the surface, such as minor earthquakes or other geological changes. Another tool used in similar research is the Ground Penetrating Radar, GPR. This technology works by sending radio waves into the ground and analyzing the echoes that bounce back. It's mostly used to find things buried underground, like old pipes or archaeological sites. Sometimes, though, it can find unexpected things just beneath where we walk, adding another layer of information about our environment. Using these tools, hydrophones, geophones, and GPR, researchers can really get a detailed picture of what's happening both in the water and under the ground. Each device provides a different type of data, and together they help paint a complete picture. However, interpreting the data from these devices isn't always straightforward. The information they provide needs to be carefully analyzed to avoid jumping to conclusions. This deep dive into both the aquatic and the underground through technology does more than just satisfy scientific curiosity. It can influence where we build things, how we protect certain habitats, and even how we prepare for natural disasters. Although these technologies offer a lot of insights, they also depend a lot on human interpretation. Sometimes what the data suggests might be influenced by what researchers expect or hope to find rather than what is actually there. Understanding the depths of the ocean and the layers of the earth requires a lot of sophisticated equipment and smart scientists. As these technologies develop, they become even more sensitive and capable, providing even more data for scientists to work with. But no matter how advanced these tools become, the real challenge remains in making sense of all the information they collect. This task requires as much wisdom as it does technological expertise. While our modern tools allow us to find empty spaces that might change the way sounds are made when these areas are disturbed, it's evident that we still have a lot to learn about phenomena like the underwater sounds recorded under the Euphrates. Interpreting these sounds is particularly challenging. The equipment we use, like hydrophones for underwater and geophones for ground, picks up sounds that are influenced by many factors. The material they pass through, how far they travel, and any objects or structures in the way that might change or increase the sounds. Let's dive into the scientific hurdles in understanding these sounds. The murky waters of sound science. Even more challenging is the issue of sound frequencies. Some sounds happen at frequencies that we cannot hear or that our devices can't accurately record. This means we often struggle to understand fully what these sounds signify or where they come from. The complexity increases because sound behaves differently underwater than in air. It moves faster and can travel longer distances, but it also changes more easily because of water temperature, depth, and salt content, which can alter the original sound significantly. 
Moreover, the devices we rely on to capture these sounds are not perfect. They have specific sensitivities and limitations. If they are not calibrated correctly, if they malfunction, or if they are placed poorly, they can give us incorrect data. This can lead researchers to make wrong assumptions and spend time on theories that don't hold up. Our scientific understanding lacks clarity, which has real-world consequences. For example, without knowing precisely what causes these sounds and their characteristics, it becomes unreliable to use this information for practical purposes, like navigating underwater or predicting natural events. Despite these issues, scientific findings are often presented with a level of certainty that might be misleading. This can lead to overconfidence in our interpretations when a more cautious approach might be appropriate. As a result, we find ourselves in a challenging position. We are exploring new scientific territories where every unfamiliar sound could be an important discovery or merely a misleading noise caused by our own tools. While our technology continues to improve and gives us new ways to explore and measure, it also introduces doubts about our interpretations, reminding us that what we detect might not always reflect what is actually happening. This situation underscores the necessity for continuous improvement in our research methods and tools. It also highlights the need for a healthy skepticism about our findings until they can be verified through multiple tests and corroborated by additional data. We must remember that in science, certainty is a moving target, and what we understand today may be revised tomorrow as we gain more knowledge and insight. Thus, the path to understanding the complex world of underwater sounds is paved with both technological advances and the persistent questions they raise. The exploration of the unusual sounds of the Euphrates River showcases a series of scientific challenges. First off, the recordings themselves often lack clarity and are open to various interpretations, which makes them unreliable for concrete scientific analysis. This ambiguity in the data means that researchers are often left guessing, rather than arriving at verifiable facts. Another major obstacle is the inability to maintain a controlled environment. The Euphrates, with its intricate pathways and lively natural setting, presents a constantly changing backdrop that complicates scientific observation. It's difficult to perform experiments when the environment won't stay the same from one moment to the next, making the necessary consistency for valid scientific experiments elusive. The issue of reproducibility stands out particularly. Scientific progress depends on the ability to perform the same experiment under the same conditions and achieve the same results. However, with these sound events being irregular and influenced by constantly shifting environmental conditions, repeating an experiment exactly is often unfeasible. This lack of consistency throws doubt on any findings as they can't easily be confirmed by repeat experiments. Furthermore, interpreting these sounds might require expertise from a range of fields, including geology, archeology, span acoustics, and even cultural studies, a combination that rarely comes together smoothly. This interdisciplinary requirement not only makes organizing and funding research more complicated, but also adds layers of potential bias or conflicting interpretations from different scientific perspectives. Each field views the problem through its own lens, which can distort the overall picture. Additionally, the mix of natural and possible human factors in the sounds adds another level of complexity, forcing researchers to differentiate between what is caused by human activity and what is purely a product of natural phenomena. This blending of influences often leads to more questions than answers, with researchers having to guess which factors are at play. In fields like paranormal research, these unexplained sounds are often seen as an opportunity to link historical myths with modern events. While this might capture the imagination, it tends to lean towards sensationalism rather than solid scientific inquiry. The speculative nature of such fields can often overshadow rigorous empirical analysis, leading to more entertaining conclusions than educational ones. In acoustic studies, these sounds could potentially spur the development of new methods or technologies to better understand how sound behaves in such unique environments. This push could lead to advancements in acoustic science, broadening our understanding of sound in unusual settings. Nonetheless, the same basic problems, control over variables, and the ability to reproduce results limit the practical application of any new knowledge gained. To sum it all up, 
While the investigation into the sounds from the Euphrates does attract scientific interest, it is fraught with challenges that range from practical to theoretical. These difficulties mean that often, research can only offer fragmented insights, each supported by different assumptions and incomplete data. The result is a field of study mired in uncertainty, where solid facts are hard to come by and definitive conclusions remain out of reach. The quest to understand these phenomena is a through a landscape filled with more uncertainties than certainties, where clear answers are rare and the pursuit of knowledge is an ongoing struggle against the limitations of current scientific practices. This ongoing challenge hampers clear understanding and fuels a cycle of speculation and incomplete theories. Is our pursuit of understanding sounds from